morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some showers up in far north Queensland, some storms and showers possible across the Northern Territory in Western Australia. A bit of a rain bomb is actually expected to develop there. We'll talk about some wet weather for Tasmania and a potential severe thunderstorm outbreak for coastal parts of New South Wales. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We're nearing in on 20,000 so all the support really does help and is much appreciated around here. But let's get stuck straight into things. We're going to start things off up in far north Queensland. Just to give a bit of a weather recap up there, there have been some showers over the past 24 hours and there's still some showers moving through today that have dropped some decent rainfall accumulations up there. I believe the heaviest accumulations over the past 72 hours have been up to 50 millimetres outside of Innisfail. We're also looking at some showers throughout the course of today, which you can see on the radar imagery right now, streaming in between Cairns and Fishery Falls. So some unpleasant and wet weather is possible there. The showers you can see here on the forecast are expected to continue throughout the rest of today before easing off later tonight. We do have the chance of showers again tomorrow, but again, nothing too crazy. The highest rainfall accumulations will be around the Daintree rainforest there before they ease off in time for next week. You can see the showers still persisting through the early parts of this week, but by Wednesday and Thursday, they're really starting to clear out up in far north Queensland. This onshore flow really does quickly die off, and you can see they're expecting a couple of days of pretty calm, dry conditions. In fact, from about Thursday onwards right through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday up to the 24th of September and probably a little bit further beyond it. We're not expecting any rainfall up there, which I bet they are stoked to hear about. Just take a look at this on the rainfall forecast here, which is seven days. I mean, take a look at this, seven day rainfall accumulations, only about 10 millimetres up in Queensland's far north. That's the lowest rainfall accumulations I've seen in the past 12 months up there over a 10 day forecast. So some great news for some dry weather up there. Um, uh, however, there is still going to be a few days of some relatively wetter weather up there. You can see rainfall accumulations through to Wednesday expected to be around 50 millimetres in pockets, especially around Bartle Free, outside of Innisfail and Fishery Falls. You can see some good accumulations are possible there. And like always, I don't need to go over this every single video, but you can get away with doubling or even tripling the rainfall accumulations in the right mountain valley up there. So 150 millimetres on the forecast is cause for concern, certainly something we need to be watching out quite closely for. Uh, that rainfall there can add to the river level substantially and then in time for the big ra uh, rainfall arrivals sometime in the later parts of uh, this month we'll be seeing some significant or next month rather we'll be seeing some significant flooding uh, possible across parts of Queensland's far north but I mean take a look at this soil moisture anomalies right now across far north Queensland they're still above average and sitting at 100% which is cause for concern and they will continue to sit at those values until at least Wednesday but by Monday next week they're really dropping off up here so the week of dry weather is going to do wonders for the soil moisture values up in Queensland's far north. Uh, much needed dry weather, that's for sure, and the soil moisture values will be substantially above average. However, I mean, when we're drying the soil out to around 70 or 80 percent, that means we can take a lot more rainfall up there, which is great news because we are arriving into the first months of the big uh, rainfall season, the northern rainfall on set up there. So when we do start to see the soil moisture values dry out here in time for that, that is fantastic news. It just reduces the risk of major you're flooding up there uh, just by that little extra uh, bit which is looking at what well, was looking like it was going to be a huge concern this year but now it seems like the risk of that has temporarily dropped off at least just slightly just to, with the rainfall uh, that's expected to move through just with how uh, the river levels and the soil is expected to dry out throughout the later parts of next week. It is looking really good to see up there. And with that, we're going to be seeing some warm temperatures as well. Daytime maximum won't be too warm up towards sort of, uh, will be too warm up towards 30 degrees. Uh, still quite pleasant weather up there. Inland, you'll be seeing daytime maximum up towards 33, 34 degrees. And it's going to be getting quite warm throughout the later parts of next week through Saturday and Sunday as well. So we'll keep a things, an eye on things up there. Definitely looking quite warm for Queensland's far north, typical for this time of the year, though. Uh, it's now time to shift focus. We're going to talk about the Northern Territory and Western Australia. We do have quite a bit to get through here from a really complex weather system that's expected to develop later on today. So you can see some showers moving north of Nullanby and Gove, that sort of peninsula, Cape Wessel up there right now from a bit of a cloud stream that's streaming into the uh, Timor Sea north of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now, what's going to be happening from this weather system 
system is over the coming to, uh, sort of 72 hours, it's going to develop into a low pressure system north of the Northern Territory. In fact, somewhere around Darwin and the Melville Island sort of precinct there. You can see throughout the course of today, minimal rainfall is expected, but, but from Monday afternoon, we're going to be seeing showers and the potential for thunderstorms firing up across much of Northern Queen, uh, Northern Northern Territory around Kakadu and then across towards Melville Island as well. Darwin is expecting up to five millimeters of rain tomorrow, which is going to be their first decent rainfall or first recorded rainfall in at least four months. So certainly some good rainfall uh, accumulations are possible there. The showers and storms will be very hit and miss across much of the Northern Territory and they won't be extending further south and about Wave Hill. There is the chance of showers throughout the entire state, however, but I highly doubt that showers uh, dump rainfall across any location south of around Catherine. I think the rainfall will be too remote to be picked up by weather stations and it will be way too hit and miss. It's going to be a very hard weather system to forecast where exactly where the rainfall is going to be firing up. You can see showers and storms expected to continue through Monday night into Tuesday morning when they will be peaking. There's going to be some pretty consistent showers and storms expected across much of the Northern Territory by Tuesday morning between Wave Hill up towards Darwin in the northwestern corner of the state. Showers and storms also continuing throughout Western Australia throughout the northern parts of the Kimberley region along the coastline of Truscott and Columba Some good rainfall is possible throughout uh, Tuesday to the 9am on Wednesday. We could be seeing up to 25 millimetres around areas, especially around at Jabiru and up towards Darwin. We could be seeing some decent rainfall accumulations there and the first decent rainfall for wet season 24-25. Uh, now take a look at the rainfall through here. It does clear out by Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday. You can see showers still continuing through Tuesday afternoon, but by Wednesday afternoon they have completely cleared out of the Northern Territory and it's going to leave rainfall accumulations looking pretty healthy for this time of the year. I mean, take a look at this. To the 9am on Wednesday morning, we're looking at rainfall accumulations up to 50 millimetres outside of Darwin here. Darwin itself expecting about 20 millimetres of rainfall. Now that lines up pretty perfectly with the Bureau of Meteorology's rainfall forecast and there's great model congruency for this weather event as well. I mean, take a look what the GFS expects here, up to 15 millimetres or so for Darwin and a really even spread of rainfall, similar to what the Eastern Earth model is saying here. And the Axis G3 is saying something pretty similar, just a little bit more rainfall is expected from that front. And the Axis G3 is the Bureau of Meteorology's own forecast model and it has a big thunderstorm bias, which means when it sees the chance for thunderstorms, it goes absolutely ham. And that's why we're seeing such incredible rainfall accumulations here, up to 100 millimetres outside of Darwin across towards Humpty Doo. So some significant rainfall accumulations possible, but I don't think we're going to be seeing up towards 100 millimetres or so. That just seems a little bit bullish for me at this time. And yeah, I think it's just the yeah, Axis G3 having a bit of a interesting feature forming on the thunderstorm forecast here. But again, it looks like Monday night into early Tuesday morning is going to be quite interesting for areas around Darwin. For storm chasers there, you might get some long track pulse thunderstorms first of the season, so it certainly might be worth going out there and trying your luck chasing them. I don't think there'll be too much in the way of lightning strikes. It just looks to be more showery based uh, weather stuff. Nothing severe either, just some good rainfall. But yeah, it could be a good uh, kind of warm up to go and chase uh, those storms out there, especially outside of Darwin. Looks like there's going to be a good road network around these systems as well. Uh, so yeah, it could be a good road network and get yourself back in the loop for storm chasing. Now that does it in terms of the Northern Territory and Western Australia, at least for now, because later on in the forecast period next Saturday and Sunday, we've got a low pressure system that's expected to develop across Western Australia from Sunday the 22nd of September. Now we did briefly go over this in Friday morning's forecast update. However, it wasn't called for in kind of this pattern here, but this low pressure system which will join up with the cold front is expected to spark up a thunderstorm outbreak across central Western Australia and into the Northern Territory and even into South Australia as well. And this kind of thunderstorm outbreak here is going to be dumping an awful lot of rainfall. I mean, take a look at this from Saturday next weekend onwards. We're talking about rainfall accumulations across a four day period expected to exceed 100 millimetres in places in some areas in the Northern Territory. I don't think this is going to happen. I'm just going to go out here and say it right now. I've got no uh, kind of support in this forecast solution from happening. I think that this is complete bogus from the Eastern Earth and I don't think it was even worth our time to be talking about it. But I have brought it up in this video just as a heads up in case something like this sticks around on the forecast models for tomorrow. Uh, it'd be kind of like a complete flip-flop I guess on the forecast but we will keep an eye on things. The GFS is still saying for increased tropical moisture similar to what the Eastern Earth is saying at the later parts of next weekend and into early next fortnight. However they've got it in in terms for Queensland. The Axis G3 is also saying increased tropical moisture, but not as dramatically as what the Eastern Earth and the Axis G3 model is saying, and they've got it more sort of over the Northern Territory.
country uh, top end around sort of Darwin and the Kakadu area. So again, there's massive model uncertainty with this forecast uh, right now in terms of a thunderstorm outbreak across central uh, Western Australia and into the Northern Territory. I ju I'm just going to go out here and I don't think it's going to happen. Definitely not in the way that the forecast models are saying, but we'll keep a very close eye on things for this weather event, that's for sure. Now before we talk about the thunderstorm outbreak for New South Wales, we're going to just recap on some winter weather for Tasmania. They do have a week of the stuff unfortunately coming through and it's going to move up and creep into areas such as Victoria and New South Wales as well. And in fact they're already being plagued by the cold weather right now. Mount Buller at minus 5 this morning and Falls Creek down to minus 6 and I believe Threadbow an even colder minus 7 there. So it is bitterly cold across parts of New South Wales and Victoria. It's also pretty cold across parts of Tasmania. You can see how Mount Reed minus 2 and Leon 1 we minus Minus one, however, not as cold as Victoria and Tasmania, and that's under the influence of a powerful high pressure ridge which has built itself up in place of this low pressure track that has moved through. Now, unfortunately, this high pressure ridge is going to stick around, it's going to be equally cold across parts of Victoria and New South Wales tomorrow, with a big spread of frosts expected deep into New South Wales and parts of Victoria into early tomorrow morning, especially for the higher elevations above 800 meters. We've also got the chance of snow in the lower elevations throughout the course of today and tomorrow uh, for parts of Tasmania down to about 600 metres. We're talking about the chance of snow as well right throughout the course of this week through Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Showers just being pretty consistent across the west coast of Tasmania from about uh, Monday onwards and then a cold front sweeping up on Wednesday and Thursday. This one here is going to be pretty significant in terms of the amount of cold air that it drags up from the south and that could be bringing snow as far down as about 300 metres of elevation especially across the south of the state. So a huge spread of snow is possible next Thursday and Friday from this weather event before the cold fronts do ease off for a little bit later on next weekend on Saturday and Sunday the 21st and 22nd of September and it looks like a little bit of a return to the cooler calmer dry conditions across Tasmania as opposed to the wet conditions they're going to be bringing an awful lot of rainfall over the next 10 days I mean just take a look at this until Saturday we're looking at up to 120 millimeters across parts of the west coast some pretty substantial accumulations there Strawn expecting about 100 millimeters Hobart however only expecting a piddly 25 millimeters in the east coast expecting even less than that. The rainfall doesn't make it much into Victoria either, definitely not into New South Wales. A few good accumulations are possible into the alpine areas of Victoria and New South Wales. Same thing with the snow. I mean, take a look at this. A couple of good dustings expected there. But it's mainly going to be the cold weather, uh, cold air that's impacting Victoria and New South Wales. But we will give New South Wales a little bit of love in this forecast. I mean, take a look at this later on the forecast period. I believe it was next Sunday. This low pressure system and thunderstorm ridge that's expected to develop in the Tasman Sea could spark the chance for thunderstorms across parts of New South Wales. And also, if this weather event comes to fruition, exactly how the Eastman Wave model is saying, by next Thursday, the 26th of September, we could be looking at a thunderstorm outbreak across parts of New South Wales, just with all the warm air that is expected to be moving through the state so we will keep a very close eye on things for New South Wales because it looks like the forecast is just trying really hard to give them a thunderstorm outbreak. Next Sunday as well the Axis G3, the Beaver Meteorology's forecast model is expecting a bit of a thunderstorm event across parts of the north east and tied with a low pressure system that's going to move on into the Tasman Sea so again it is all happening for New South Wales and certainly something that we need to be watching quite closely this one here could deliver quite a lot of rainfall from the 9am on Sunday to the 9am on Monday. I mean, take a look at this, potentially up to 200 millimetres, but the majority of that staying up well offshore. The highest inland accumulations being around 75 millimetres. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is going to be happening. This is definitely not a guaranteed on the forecast right now. This is the Axis G3's forecast, after all. It's the most unreliable forecast model that I have access to. However, we will need to keep a very close eye on things because things can change, things will change, and this forecast here remains very, very interesting to see, that's for sure. It's been a shorter forecast update today thank you so much for watching the video to this point if you have then please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, and give me a weather report for your location in the comment section down below and especially if you live in new south wales and victoria in the alpine areas let me know how cold it got down to last night if we cracked minus 10 in september that'd be a bit unusual especially for this time of the year a special shout out to the channel sponsors the names are on screen right now i could not run this show without them and again their support is greatly appreciated but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm Goodbye.